In our last lab, we analyzed some of the nutrients we eat, such as carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. Before nutrients can be used by our bodies, they must be digested. In this lab, we will explore the actions of mechanical and chemical digestion. In mechanical digestion, the muscular action of the digestive organs breaks food into smaller pieces, mixes the pieces with digestive enzymes, and moves the pieces through the alimentary canal. The first step in mechanical digestion is chewing. Chewing breaks food down into smaller pieces, making it easier to digest. Trying to digest a solid piece of food could take 24 hours or more. However, when food is mechanically broken down into smaller pieces, more of its surface area is exposed to enzymes, and digestion only takes four to six hours. In this experiment, we will perform three tests to demonstrate how increasing the surface area decreases the digestion time. Instead of actual food, which takes hours to digest, we will use effervescent tablets, which dissolve more quickly. An effervescent tablet is a hard, round, flat substance that fizzes and dissolves when it is dropped into water. The effervescent tablet contains sodium bicarbonate and citric acid. When the tablet begins to dissolve in water, the two chemicals mix and react. A byproduct of this reaction is carbon dioxide, which forms bubbles in the water. The fizz caused by these bubbles stirs up the water and helps the tablet dissolve faster. For our first test, we will time how long it takes for a whole effervescent tablet to dissolve in water. The water in this beaker has been warmed to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 38 degrees Celsius, which is about the same temperature as we would expect to find inside the organs of the digestive system. We drop the tablet into the water and watch as it dissolves. We see that the tablet dissolves in 34 seconds. For our next test, an effervescent tablet has been broken into two pieces. The tablet has the same volume as a whole tablet, but its surface area has been increased. This tablet represents food that has been slightly chewed. We drop both pieces of the effervescent tablet into a beaker of warm water and time how long it takes the pieces to dissolve. We see that an effervescent tablet broken into two pieces dissolves in 27 seconds, slightly faster than the time it takes for a whole tablet to dissolve. For our third test, an effervescent tablet has been crushed into powder. The tablet has the same volume as each of the previous two tablets, but its surface area has been greatly increased. This powdered tablet represents food that has been thoroughly chewed. We pour the powdered effervescent tablet into a beaker of warm water and time how long it takes the powder to dissolve. We see that a powdered effervescent tablet dissolves in 17 seconds, a fraction of the time required for a whole tablet to dissolve. The powdered tablet dissolved fastest because it had the greatest surface area. Likewise, Food digests much faster when it is broken down into smaller pieces by mechanical digestion. While we chew our food, it is being mixed with saliva, which is secreted by the salivary glands. Saliva moistens food to make it easier to swallow, and it also adds digestive enzymes. These digestive enzymes begin the work of chemical digestion. In chemical digestion, enzymes and other chemical substances break down food into nutrients that can be used by the body's cells. Chemical digestion takes place in the mouth, stomach, 
and small intestine. The salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas help with the process of chemical digestion. While food is being chewed, the mouth and tongue press the food into a soft round ball called a bolus. After a bolus is swallowed, it passes down the esophagus into the stomach. In the stomach, mechanical digestion continues as the muscles of the stomach wall smash the bolus and break it into tiny particles. Chemical digestion also continues as the bolus is mixed with digestive enzymes. One enzyme that digests food is pepsin. Glandular cells in the stomach secrete an inactive form of pepsin, which cannot do its job unless it is mixed with an acid. Other glandular cells in the stomach secrete gastric acid to activate the pepsin. One of the main components of gastric acid is hydrochloric acid. The chemical symbol for hydrochloric acid is HCl. We will do an experiment to demonstrate the importance of pepsin and acid in the digestion of proteins. In this experiment, three solutions will be tested to determine how each reacts with proteins. The first solution is a pepsin solution consisting of pepsin dissolved in water. The second solution is a diluted solution of hydrochloric acid. The third solution is a mixture of both pepsin and hydrochloric acid. The protein we're using in this experiment is albumin, which is the same protein found in egg whites. A sample of powdered albumin has been placed in each of these four test tubes. Each test tube has been marked with a P for protein digestion and labeled P1, P2, P3, and P4. We add five milliliters of the pepsin solution to the albumin in test tube P1. After placing the stopper, we swirl the test tube until the albumin powder dissolves. The fact that the albumin powder has dissolved does not mean it has been digested. Even though we cannot see the albumin, protein molecules are still present. We add five milliliters of hydrochloric acid to the albumin in test tube P2 and then mix the contents. We add five milliliters of the pepsin hydrochloric acid mixture to the albumin in test tube P3 and mix the contents. The fourth test tube is our control for this experiment. So we add five milliliters of water to the albumin in test tube P4 and mix the contents. Next, all four test tubes are placed in a water bath. The water bath is set at a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. The test tubes need to remain in the water bath for 45 minutes. It is time to remove the test tubes from the water bath and place them back in the test tube rack. Now we are ready to check each test tube for the presence of proteins. If proteins are present in a solution, it means protein digestion did not take place. The chemical indicator for this test is biuret reagent. Six drops of the indicator are added to each test tube. If proteins are present, the biuret reagent will turn purple. Let's check test tube P1, which contains albumin and the pepsin solution. The solution turned purple, which means proteins are present in the solution so protein digestion did not take place. This indicates that pepsin alone is not sufficient to digest proteins. The contents of test tube P2, albumin and the hydrochloric acid solution, also turned purple. 
hydrochloric acid alone is not sufficient to digest proteins. Test tube P3 contains albumin and the pepsin hydrochloric acid mixture. Notice that the solution in this test tube turned pink. The pink color indicates that the proteins have been broken down into amino acids. This confirms that pepsin and hydrochloric acid are both necessary for the digestion of proteins. Test tube P4 contains albumin and water. The solution in this test tube also turned purple, indicating that proteins are still present in the solution. Protein digestion did not take place. This was the expected result, since test tube P4 was the control. Partially digested food that leaves the stomach and enters the small intestine is called chyme. In the small intestine, chyme is mixed with digestive enzymes secreted from the pancreas. Amylase is a pancreatic enzyme that breaks down starch into glucose. Glucose is a simple carbohydrate that can be assimilated by the cells of the body. In this experiment, we will examine the chemical digestion of starch by amylase. Five milliliters of a starch solution have been added to each of two test tubes. Each test tube has been marked with an S for starch digestion and labeled S1 and S2. Both test tubes are placed in a water bath at 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. The test tubes remain in the water bath for 15 minutes. Next, we take test tube S1 out of the water bath and add 0.15 grams of amylase to the starch solution. Then, mix the contents and place the test tube back into the water bath. Test tube S2 contains the starch solution, but no enzymes will be added because this is our control. The test tubes remain in the water bath for another 10 minutes. It is time to remove both test tubes from the water bath. Now we are ready to check each test tube for the presence of starch. If starch is present in a solution, it means starch digestion did not take place. The chemical indicator for this test is potassium triiodide solution, which turns black in the presence of starch. We add three drops of potassium triiodide solution to each test tube and mix the contents. Notice that the solution in test tube S1 turned yellow, not black. This indicates that starch was broken down into glucose by the enzyme amylase. The solution in test tube S2 turned black, indicating that starch is present and no starch digestion took place. This was the expected result since test tube S2 was the control. We have looked at the digestion of albumin, which is a protein, and the digestion of starch, which is a carbohydrate. In this final experiment, we will examine the digestion of another type of nutrient called lipids. Lipids break down into fatty acids. Lipids are digested by lipase, which is a digestive enzyme secreted from the pancreas. We will use milk for this experiment because it has a high concentration of lipids. This type of milk is called litmus milk because a chemical indicator called litmus has already been added to it. Litmus will help us determine if lipid digestion has taken place. 10 milliliters of litmus milk have been placed into each of two test tubes. Each test tube has been marked with an L for lipid digestion and labeled L1 and L2. Litmus indicates the pH of a solution by changing color. Milk is alkaline, so both solutions are light purple at this time. Litmus milk will turn dark purple if the solution is acidic, and it will remain light purple if the solution is alkaline. We add 0.5 grams of lipase to the litmus milk in test tube L1 
and mix the contents. Test tube L2 contains litmus milk, but no enzymes will be added because this is our control. Both test tubes are placed in a water bath for 45 minutes. It is time to remove both test tubes from the water bath. Notice that the solution in test tube L1 is dark purple, which means the solution has become acidic. This indicates that lipase has broken down lipids into fatty acids and confirms that lipid digestion has taken place. The solution in test tube L2 is still light purple, indicating that lipids are still present and no lipid digestion took place. This was the expected result, since test tube L2 was the control. We now know more about mechanical and chemical digestion in the mouth, stomach, and small intestine. In the next lab, we will examine the phases of mitosis. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities.